Uh, I know it seems like we've been gone for a while, and we have. Um, you may have thought we took some time off, but we in fact didn't take any time off, and it's been nothing but crazy around here. Problem is, we haven't really had anything worth showing you for videos, you know, two, three times a week like I would like to do, um, and you'll see why today. But we're going to start with our uh, first track day after sick week and the catastrophic failure that resulted from it. So if you followed along with us on sick week, you'll know that we changed everything right before we left. Tires and new pulley, and we had gone to a new tire combine we've never played with before, and it bit us. So we almost got it figured out in sick week, but we didn't actually get any good runs in. We got 10.07 was I think the best run, and we know the car is faster than that. So we're out here at Fayetteville, we're going to test it, and we're going to see if we can make these tires work. So, one way or the other, something's going to happen. Well, there ain't a whole lot of people here, so we're able to go for our first run right now. We're going to be able to get as many runs as we want. We will be our only limitation today, or tonight, night time. So, first run, we're going to put it right back to where it was the last day of sick week. Suspension, air pressure, it's all the same. So, we'll see what that does for us, and then we'll make adjustments from there. Rather unsurprisingly, first hit, wheel up again, which I kind of thought was going to happen. We were only at the, you know, the same place we were the last time. We didn't actually go change anything. So now I'm going to change things. Hopped right over him, huh? Yep. And I'm like, well, I'll just get into it just to feel the track. I mean, it felt all right. I, just, I let out like just before the board. So was... Yeah, you were just kind of, you know, feeling the track on the way down. Yeah, basically. Yep, you hopped. Let me uh, check the footage and probably go up in tire pressure. Did it get warm at all or no? Uh, okay. Alright, we're going to make our second hit. I have changed tire pressures. We've gone up two more PSI. I haven't touched suspension yet. Uh, if she wheel hops again, I'm going to probably tighten the suspension down one more clip. Um, I'm not really interested in going too high in tire pressure because I think it's just going to cause problems. So we're going to have to probably try to play with the front a little bit, try to keep some weight off the tires on the initial hit until she kind of gets moving out of there. Well, you can only beat on things for just so long before they destroy themselves. So that's a drive shaft, and I'm willing to bet a rear diff. Hey, hey, your first major break. Here's your drive shaft back. I feel like Matt. Well, that was no good. So next thing we did was we took the car to the shop, put it on the lift, assessed the damage. I knew we had a broken drive shaft. wasn't too difficult to figure out. We did have the 4L80E that we were planning on putting in the car when we put turbos on it. Yep. We eventually plan on putting turbos on this car. So we thought, I have a drive shaft, I'm not gonna spend a bunch of money on a drive shaft, so we'll put the 4L80 in and put the drive shaft in. Problem is the 4L80 had a two-piece drive shaft as well as this two-piece drive shaft that was for the 6L90, and you'll see why that's a problem right about now. All right, damage assessment day. We were at our buddy's shop. He was kind enough to let us use his lift and see what carnage there may be from when I broke the drive shaft at Fayetteville the other night. We just got the muffler off and the bumper, of course. Now it's trying to fiddle the exhaust. Which is bent to all holy hell. Great. Yeah, it ain't coming out. I don't know. Let me see if we can get the light on here. Doesn't matter. We'll see it. That's not, that's not fun. <laughs> all right, that's not this side, I guess. So we're going to continue on, and once we can get a clearer picture, we'll be back. So first glance we have the exhaust where it's dented pretty good pretty good there and all over here. So let's keep digging. I see a hole. That shouldn't be there. <laughs> oh man. Alright, your take was that the heat shield or oh yeah it's heat shield take a real good hit. Yeah it's a nice big hole. I think it was holding something up. Yeah, look at that. Look at the heat shield. That's good stuff right there. Looks like Swiss cheese. I don't know if we'll be able to reuse that. All right, let's see. Oh, yeah. Oh, broken. Uh-oh. 
Oh, it ripped the floor of the car. Where? Oh. That right there. That's how you actually mount the carrier bearing. So that's never going to mount up again. The diff seems to be okay. Everything else seems to be okay. No damage that we can see. So now we are trying to take out the 6L90 to start messing with the um, the mount and you have to notch the frame you said, right? I probably gonna have to cut the frame out right about here to for the electrical connector on the 4L80. 6L90 is in the back here, 4L80 is on the side over here. So I'll have to notch the frame out and then weld in a piece of steel to get it back straight again or structural again and uh, yeah and then once the mount and that is done then we have to fabricate something for your exhaust or we can uh, turn down for what <laughs> I wonder about you sometimes uh, that's gonna be a little loud hmm? it's gonna be a little loud doing that yeah, not really for street use on that. So, all right. I'm gonna go with no on that one. I guess keep on keeping on. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, all eight of them. Oh, there we go. All right. Yeah. Slide back a little, and then you can come down. Dun, da, da, da. That's a big bitch. Why does it look so much? It just looks huge. Because the four lady is only about half the size. After much assessment and thinking, we need to get a drive shaft, a single piece, either four lady or six L90. The four lady is going to slow the car down. Uh, when we put the car back together if we don't have turbos on it and things that the 480 was meant to go with so we made the decision to do the 6l90 back in the car with a one-piece drive shaft because we'll be able to sell it when we finally go full turbos with the 480 and all that kind of stuff that comes in the future uh so the other thing is we're going to do is we have the heads we have the cam transmission was already out just pull the engine do the heads do the cam check everything over make sure it's all good put it back together while we wait eight weeks for the drive shaft. Plan. Drop all the stuff at home, grab as many empty boxes as I can, rip the engine out on the lift, drag it all back to the garage, throw the heads and cam, uh, and anything else that we plan on doing to the engine in the garage. And then once all is well, we will hopefully be able to put the 6L90 and the engine back in the car on the lift just to make things easier for mr jared and then some other small things like new tires uh for both the track and street driving uh and hopefully all as well <sighs> right of shame to be fair we pulled the engine out of it and the transmission, so she's okay. But she's home. Now she could be with the rest of her parts scattered everywhere between my office and the garage. My baby. Oh, so sad. I'm sorry. It'll be okay. Well, this is an unfamiliar sight. That's the engine. Under there is the transmission. And there is poor Val, looking like a gasser because this engine and that transmission should be in there. But it's not. Nope, since you broke the drive shaft, and it's gonna be a few weeks for us to get another one, might as well, since we had the transmission out, because we were making some clearance room for this for later, but since we had the transmission out, hi buddy. We might as well pull the engine, do the heads, do the cam. We're actually going to check the pistons, make sure we don't have any collapsed ring lands or anything broken in there too. It's out, might as well. But Sharon is going to start taking it apart. Yeah. What do I start with? Uh, well, first let's start by taking off the steam vent. 
ports. Then we'll do valve covers, coolant temp sensor, and then we can get into taking the rockers and stuff off. Okay. Wow, that's actually the cleanest valve cover I've ever seen come off an engine. This thing was clean, look at that. That's because she's a good girl. Wow, she's clean. Well, we've got the cleanest valve covers in the world off. Now we're breaking loose the uh, rocker bolts. I'm going to take the rockers out. Show me your hands. Oh, dirty. Dirty. <clears throat> they aren't tight. Yeah, they're a little tight. I'd rather them be uh, tight and at the right valve lash than uh, loose and flopping all over the place. Yeah, that's for sure. What you doing? Taking off the Scott heads. Yeah, you're taking out the head studs, huh? Head bolts. Head bolts. We wish we were so ingrained with trying to find head studs, which aren't even a thing right now, so. We'll be all right. All right. Moment of truth. That wasn't too bad. Ooh, she got hot and only one, looks like. Yeah, she did. All right, let's see. Number two. Numero dos. Oh. Drippy, drippy. Yes. Ooh, that's... That's fine. Okay. No, they look like they're in, they're both in really good shape. Cool. <laughs> it's pretty... Oh, I pulled the dowel pin out. Where is... Oh. There. Hey, that, you're not getting it out like that. I'm going to have to get a plier. Yeah, I'll get it out. Oh, not a big deal. Start cross hatching on the cylinders. Yeah. Uh, let's see. It's in good shape. I mean, we'll pull the pistons out to check the uh, check the ring lens, make sure that we don't have a problem with those. Right. Hey. What? Well. What? I think ring lash just became the least of our problems. Why? What? It's got a cracked sleeve. <gasps> oh, I see. Get the flashlight on here. Oh, shit. Hey, language. Sorry. It's got a cracked sleeve. How is this engine still running? Can you feel it with your fingernail? Yeah. I guess. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Huh. What the? Well, I'm gonna cry. Yeah, don't cry. What in the world? Oh, that would be a cracked sleeve. That would be uh, probably from detonation, or you know, that's been cracked for a while too. Oh, is this... that the cylinder that we? Were... This seven? No, this is uh, one three. Oh three. Oh three. Yeah, I'm it's sorry. actually got Wrong some side. scuffing on the sidewall here. I bet you that we got a rod bearing or something down there that's giving up or I don't know. This is not good. Looks like we resleeve the engine. Let me roll the engine over a little bit and see if we can get any more cracked sleeves. Woo! That's not good. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna cry. Don't cry. Where's the socket that was turning the engine over? Here we go. Uh it's on the thing. Back <clears throat> Today's episode of Things You Don't Expect to See. Whatever this was. There are pieces of plastic in the oil pickup. Oh, that's not good. Uh, no. Certainly is not. What did this break off of? I have no idea. Although I do feel like I'm playing adult version of the game Operation right now. Yeah. <clears throat> that shouldn't be in the oil pickup tube. Uh, no. No, it shouldn't. <clears throat> what about that barbell dumbbell piece oh, that you're talking hey, about? There's another piece of it here. 
looks like a plastic connector. No, I don't think it is. I don't know what it is. Let's take that off and see if I can find out what the where it came from. Survey says. Ooh. That looks not right. You show you point to me and tell me which part looks not right. This part right here. <laughs> this loose guy. <laughs> well. Ooh, that's a loosey loosey goosey. Wow. So I'm assuming that piece went up here with that metal piece that we found, and this was the, probably the top part of it. Yeah, look. Garbage. <clears throat> Whale. Well, that's not what you want to see, is it? That's about as uh, catastrophic failure as we could get. Transmission is fine. Drive shaft is not. Uh, body is not one piece drive shaft is necessary engine is no good so problem we have is that parts and lead times on everything is absolutely ridiculous right now Rocky Mountain Race Week is really only not even three months away we don't have time to really mess around with too many things the local machine shops we're gonna be about 10 to 12 weeks before we can get the engine fixed and back Nobody's got anything. They're all on 12, 16. I heard 20 weeks wait time for a new short block. I found one engine builder who builds some ridiculous engines that actually can get us one in time to put it in, tune it, test it, and get it to Rocky Mountain Race Week. That's the hope. That's the plan. Uh, we're going to see. I, I can't guarantee engine builder can't guarantee so we, we've done some things to try to make it so that we can make rocky mountain race week with a new setup um, there will be other things that we're going to do in the meantime while we're waiting uh, some of it on the ctsv we're still doing the mustang uh, my nieces are coming down in just about a month and we got to get that thing ready and it's over there it is gotta get that thing ready and get them racing while we wait for Sharon's engine to come back and the drive shaft to be made and a couple other things. Safe to say we won't be putting the Hoosiers back on. The car's just too heavy for those Hoosiers. It just balls them up and throws them around and you see that what happens when it does that. Uh, we already have ET Street R's back on the on the car. But for now that's it. Thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you in the next video.